Hey, what's up guys? It's Fruity. Welcome back to the fourth episode of Let's Play Mega Man 2. Atomic Fire only. Previous episode, I took down Quick Man and then obliterated Crash Man. It was very satisfying. In this episode, we'll be taking down the final two Robot Masters in this eight Robot Master roster. Starting with Robot Master number 14, Flash Man. He's got quite an ugly scowl there, doesn't he? He does not look happy over the situation. But then again, neither does Woodman. Nevertheless, Flashman looks more like he's miffed, like he's like, grumble, grumble, you know, like, like you kids get off my lawn. <laughs> Woodman just looks like he's mad, like, yeah, Mega Man, I'm gonna get ya. Flashman, yeah, he's just like, get off my lawn, I don't want you in here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's just start it up. So he's very blue. He's got like a glass dome on his head. Uh, it's all good. And incidentally, his stage is actually the ice stage of the game. Like Iceman, except he's Flash Man. A little bit unexpected, I guess. But as you can see, I slide here along the blocks. Pretty cool looking stage, actually. I really like just the way these ice blocks look and the fact that they actually flash in sequence like that. It looks really cool. The background's a nice color, but a bit generic, really. It's just sort of a basic tile pattern, and it's not even that uh, that much of a good-looking one. But yeah, nice color. So to start off this stage, it's actually a little bit of a maze. You've got like a few paths to go down, but only certain particular paths will work in your favor. And you got these shot men, as I believe they're called. Pretty annoying enemies, really, but they seem to go down pretty easy. So uh, you have another wall back here that you can destroy with Crash Man's weapon. Which I may as well show off since I got it last episode. So here we are, Peach Mega Man. You fire it at the wall and it blows it up. There we go, and I got a little health. But I'm going to pretend I didn't do that because this is supposed to be atomic fire only and go back this way. So yep, if you have Crash Man's weapon, then you, your options are more open in terms of where you can go on this stage. But I have to go down the bottom since I quote unquote am not using... <laughs> the crash bomb, even though I just used it, but hey, whatever, that was for demonstration purposes. Um, by using one of the items you could get up there, item 1 and uh, I think item 2, yeah, item, item 2 probably get you up there as well, you can get that one up, but yeah, we're just gonna stick with the atomic fire for now, and you'd have to use three crash bombs up there, that's pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous. But our uh, reward for not going that tricky away is having to deal with this enemy. <laughs> I can just go past him though, like that, and oh, got hit. So yeah, as you can see, it has become a bit of a maze. You've got a few paths to go down. I'm gonna go down this one, and another wall there I could break, but again, won't use the crash bombs. Damn it, getting hit by these blue wiggly enemies. Oh well. Basically, uh, the ideal way to go would be in that middle path there, because then I wouldn't have to deal with that enemy, and wouldn't have to make sure I fall to the left here. I might as well get that health, actually. Why not? fight this enemy for once, they never fight this enemy. Okay, and wait for it. So yeah, after you destroy these guys' walkers, you actually have to fight the uh, Sniper Joe itself outside the walkers. They're much simpler than the Sniper Joes in Bomb Man's stage in the first game. They just sit there and occasionally shoot some shots on a, a patterned timing. But uh, anyway, here we are, we're now at the bottom of Flash Man's stage, and if you go up along the top here, you get an E-Tank! How lovely! And once again, if you use the Crash Bomb here, you can get there to the boss gate quite easily. Yep, having the Crash Bomb definitely makes this stage a fair bit easier, but even with that Crash Bomb, this is still an easy stage. It's an easy stage, it's a short stage, and Flash Man isn't that hard either. So, yeah, this isn't such a bad pick for first either. It's, it's uh, popular with some people for first. Oh, I didn't make that final jump. It can be uh, pretty tricky if you're not careful, but there we go. I do love how the Dr. Wily symbol actually flashes, it looks cool. And another th aesthetic thing this stage has going for it is just these random ice block things. Like outside of the boss corridor down there at the bottom, like, they don't actually serve any purpose. Like I can't walk on these blocks, they're just there anyway to create a certain intricacy to the level, almost like a, a series of arteries running through the level or something. It's an interesting aesthetic choice and it sort of continues into the room here as you can see Flashman's floor. <laughs> it's pretty uneven, isn't it? Kind of like Quick Man, or except kind of worse in a way, really. It's like it's like a two two staircases. It's uh, what I like to think of it anyway. And the background is turned to some strange green bricks, uh, which you don't really see anywhere else in the stage. So that's a bit of an interesting thing to distinguish it from the rest of the stage. 
And this seems to be working pretty well. If you haven't figured it out yet, Flashman's gimmick is that he can freeze time, but unfortunately his uh, gun, which he mainly uses to hurt you with, doesn't do much damage, and he spends most of the fight like slowly walking around the steps, so really, it's not a hard boss at all. Not a bad choice for first. However, his weapon is pretty situational, it's not the most useful, so in that regard it might not be such a great choice for first. Um, the weapon we get is called the Time Stopper, not called the Flash Stopper, like uh, you'd probably expect. And yep, does exactly what it says on the tin, it uh, stops time so you can run past enemies. However, once you start using it, you can't stop using it until it drains the entire energy bar, so you really gotta choose what time you use it wisely. That's why it's not such a, a, a great weapon. Um, for some, in most regards. There are some places where it's very useful, in fact, that's the weapon you can use to uh, get past the force beams in Quick Man stage very easily, because you can freeze time, and the force beams won't come at you from off the side of the screen. Uh, but we also got item 3 for defeating Flashman, as I mentioned, we got item 1 for Heatman, item 2 for Airman, and item 3 for Flashman, so that's pretty cool. I'll show off item 3 uh, once we get into the next stage. Uh, I think it's interesting how item 1, Heat Man, item 2, Air Man, item 3, Flash Man, they all come from Robot Masters that are like in the center of the stage select screen. Like, if we say Bubble, Quick, Metal, and Crash are in the corners, then it only makes like logical sense to say Air, Heat, Wood, and Flash are like in the center, like center stages. And yeah, all three items come from center stages. You don't get any of the items from the corner stages, which is kind of interesting. Wood Man is the only center stage where you don't get an item. But anyway, Flashman, number 14, is defeated. Um, yep, cool looking stage, um, interesting boss, a bit easy, but I feel like it's, yeah, one of the more engaging bosses of the game. It does require a bit of concentration, even if it's not that hard, so I can appreciate it for that. And, uh, stage music, yeah, Flashman stage music is great. It's, a uh, a little repetitive, but that doesn't necessarily mean bad. It's just really catchy, real good fun. It's definitely, um, nice popular one there, and I, I definitely do enjoy it quite a lot, too. Uh, we already taken down Robot Master number 15, which was Heat Man, so we only have the one Robot Master left, the final one in the numeric order for this game, number 16, Woodman. Uh, it's uh, kind of convenient that we save Woodman for last, because I like saving best for last, because Woodman is uh, probably my favorite stage in the game. It's got really good aesthetic and really good stage design, and it's a pretty fun boss fight too, and uh, good music as well. One thing I would like to point out here on the mugshot is that Woodman has a green body, you can clearly see underneath his head he has a green body, but if we go in here now, if you look at his sprite, he doesn't have any green on his body, so I'm not sure what's up with that. <laughs> He's just like one great big tree trunk. But yeah, look at this stage, it's really cool. You know, you got like that dark, mysterious background but with this trees here and the grasses and the way the floor here is made out of wood, but it's not like real wood, it's like probably like fake wood made out of like um, some artificial material because it's got like this like metal plating on top of it. I don't know, maybe it's real wooden, they've just put the metal plating on top, but hey. We got some of these bats here, I believe they're called the Tontons, that sort of follow you around. And we have these rabbits that shoot carrots. <laughs> All the woodland creatures, eh? Uh, they uh, take 10 shots in the Mega Buster, looks like they might take less here with the Atomic Fire, so that's pretty interesting. And the carrots aren't that hard to dodge, so it's not really that big of a deal. Eh, weapon energy, which I don't need. Yep, here we go, descending actually into the tree itself, and I'm not sure what's with the background, it looks like one big giant leaf, but obviously the actual tree itself isn't made out of leaves, like the actual trunk, so I'm not sure what this background is supposed to be. It actually looks like it follows the same pattern as the wood itself, you can sort of see that, the squiggly lines, I don't know. Going onto the next screen, we come up with something that again would almost fit Heatman stage more. This mini boss which shoots fire out, again, Heat Man. I guess it'll be a fire on fire battle. Uh, these things are called Frienders, however they're also known as Hot Dogs, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> get it? Hot Dogs? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. No, I really do love that. And it looks like they go down in one hit to a charged atomic fire, which is awesome. That is, that is actually really powerful. But I guess it's to be expected. I mean, we are on Woodman stage. Wood doesn't exactly agree with fire, which is reflected in the fact that Woodman is, in fact, the robot master that's weak to atomic fire. So this obviously isn't going to be very hard. So yeah, we have to deal with three of these frienders, and uh, each one is progressively harder than the last, which I do appreciate. It is a tough challenge, but it's got a good progression to it. So it's a it's a well handled challenge. Again, a thing I like about this stage. This screen always looks weird to me, though. How we're like just in the top left of the screen, and everywhere else is just filled in wood. <laughs> Looks a bit unusual to me. Uh, this is actually one of the, or in fact it's the only time where we go up in a stage outside of Crashman stage for the eight Roman Masters. 
in six of the eight Robot Masters, yep, there are no times in the stage where you actually climb up screens on ladders. Crash Man's stage is, of course, the to token vertical ascending stage. So, of course, he has tons of that. But, yep, that's the only time where you actually go up in a Robot Master stage other than Crash Man in this game. So, yep, fun, random, pointless facts there for you. <laughs> but now we go on to uh, just another really cool-looking part of the stage. You come out of the tree and we're, like, in the forest canopy. See, it just looks cool. We have, like, these bamboo sticks. The ironic thing about the fact that we're in the canopy, though, is if you actually have a look at a map screen of this stage, we are at the same elevation as what we started the stage at. So, like, the forest floor and the forest canopy are at the same elevation. It looks really funny. My guess is that there's, like, a cliff or something, so the bottom of the forest is at a higher elevation over there on the left than it is here on the right. I don't know. Again, pointless facts. You got these monkey things that just sort of hang there and then they come up. Yeah, they're not too much of a threat as long as you're patient. But yeah, here we go, back into the other tree trunk. I honestly feel like this stage would have worked really well as the vertical stage. Just thematically, like, you're climbing up a giant tree. You know, it, it just it makes sense for a vertical stage. So I feel like maybe they should have made this, yeah, the vertical stage, like, instead of Crash Man. But at the same time, a lot of the obstacles in Crash Man stage rely on verticality, like the uh, platforms on the spaghetti spaghetti tracks. Um, I suppose you could make them work work alright in a horizontal setting. Anyway, yeah, and again, we had three screens here with these rabbits, each one sort of a little harder than the last. It's, it's a good progression to it. And as you saw on the one on the previous screen, you can just jump right over its head <laughs> on that uh, big staircase thing. But uh, yeah, here we are on the forest floor again. And uh, you got these random chickens. I think they're called Atomic Chickens, actually. A appropriate names for this Atomic Fire Only run. I'm not sure what the obsession with Atomic stuff is. But you can just stand still and they'll jump over your head. They're, they're not too hard. And you got the old Dr. Wily symbol there in, in pure brown. I mean, yeah, the, the brown brown and green colors is a bit unique for this level. There isn't many other stages I can think of in the series that are like pretty much entirely brown and green. It's very nice earthy tones to it. But, uh, yeah, with that, we are officially at Woodman. Uh, yeah, like I said, fun stage. Again, not that long, but, you know, to be honest, none of the stages in this game really all that long. So, uh, here we go with Woodman. He shoots his leaf shield, and he has this leaf uh, rain here. I'm not going to fire. I'm just going to show off uh, how his pattern works. You just jump over the leaf shield, and if you jump against the uh, wall here, you won't get hit by the raining leaves. And, uh, yep, that took half his health bar, you are not mistaken. This is his weakness, and fully charged shots absolutely annihilate him. I mean, of course Wood's gonna be weak to fire, what did you expect? I, I also appreciate how the roof here is really jagged. It's like, it's really few uh, boss rooms in the series just have jagged roofs like that, and it sort of indicates the natural tone of the stage again. The fact that it hasn't been designed by anyone, it's just like a, a natural tree. But it probably has been designed by someone, because I don't think there are any trees that giant and thick and, and all that. Uh, so we got the leaf shield, a bit of Phoenix Woodman. And in terms of green, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we actually look a bit like Bubble Man. Bubble Man turned us grey, but <laughs> Woodman turns us green. Fancy that. Um, I mean, it, well, I mean, make, make so, makes sense. Leaves, so hey, well, whatever. Yeah, we get his leaf shield. Works pretty much the same way as it as Woodman does. It it shields you if you stand in position and makes you pretty much invulnerable. Um, large enemies can break through the shield, but it'll defend you indefinitely from small enemies, which makes it pretty good for farming energy if you just like sit near a constantly respawning telly area and just let the tellies run into the shield and you can farm a lot of energy. It's very, very nice. And lives too, of course. Um, enemies don't drop E-Tanks, in case you're wondering. You have to find E-Tanks throughout the stages. No enemies drop E-Tanks. That would be a, a little bit overpowered, really. Um, a bit of an interesting thing I noticed is you have, like, um, Air Man, Bubble Man, Heat Man, and Wood Man, which I think are the Robot Masters that sort of represent the classical uh, elements, air, water, fire, and earth. Um, none of the stages have E-Tanks in them, but the other four Robot Masters are... Uh, Quick Man, Metal Man, Flash Man, and Crash Man all do have E-Tanks in the Metal Man actually has two E-Tanks. It's pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, I think that's an interesting divide through the Robot Masters, as well as the fact that uh, Quick Man, Metal Man, Flash Man, and Crash Man all start with a, a five-letter word, you know, that the prefix Quick Metal, Flash Crash, and Flash and Crash rhyme, of course, which is endlessly amusing to me, at least. Uh, I've, oh goodness, I've gone off on a tangent here. Yeah, leaf shield. Um, uh, it fires the moment you move. Um, so you either have to stand still with it, 
or to sort of um, prepare yourself for it to fire the moment you move with it in the direction that you're running. It, it can be quite a useful weapon. It's a little bit underrated. A lot of people just sort of take it at face value and say, oh, this isn't very useful. But it, it's actually quite a powerful weapon, really. Uh, I'm not going to go back to the stage select now, um, because if you go back to the stage select, it'll actually take you straight to, Doc to Dr. Wily's castle. You actually don't get to go back to the stage select screen after beating all your ma oh, robot masters, which uh, only happens in this game. You know, every other game you get to go back and so actually select the uh, fortress stages in the middle, but yeah, for some reason it just moves you straight on in this game. So, we're going to end the episode here. Uh, just wrapping up my opinions on Woodband stage, yeah, great stage aesthetic, great stage design, pretty fun boss fight overall, it's, um, a pretty, uh, it's pretty, there isn't ma too many variety of ways you can fight Woodman anymore, it's m more or less just to do what I did there, jumping against the wall with the leaves and getting behind him after a little while since he's constantly jumping towards you, but it's, yeah, it's still a pretty fun boss fight overall, even if it's a bit limited in the type of stuff that can happen. And the uh, stage music's really great. It's quite an epic stage theme, actually. I feel like it's the most sort of overtly epic music out of the eight Robot Master themes. Because a lot of other ones, like Flash Man's theme, is just sort of, you know, fabulous. <laughs> and Metal Man's theme is exciting. Air Man's theme just rocks it out. Quick Man's theme, yeah, feels a bit melancholy. Crash Man's theme is funky. Heat Man's theme is, I don't know, hot. <laughs> Bubble Man's theme is... I'm not even sure how to describe Bubble Man's theme. That's, uh... I can't really think of a word to describe that one, not that it's uh, at all bad or anything, yeah, Woodman's team is pretty, pretty epic overall, and um, I have a friend that actually really, really loves Woodman's team, it's like one of his favourite Mega Man themes, I mean, he's not really that much of a fan of the series or anything, but, you know, he's just sort of noticed that as a, as a really good piece of music he likes. As for me, it's not as much to my taste, but hey, whatever, I'm rambling now, so probably should wrap up the episode of being on this screen for like three minutes or something. <laughs> so anyway, next time we'll be moving on to Dr. Wily's castle, where we'll be taking down the first couple of stages and getting ourselves ever closer to taking down the evil doctor himself. So until then, this is Fruity, signing off. <laughs>